Nancy May spent her career working with some of the most noted CEO boards and senior leaders. She's become an expert in navigating the tricks and traps and complexities of the aging care industry and saved her parents $200,000 a year, improved their health and joy together. She's the host of Elder Care Success, one of the top 5% most popular podcasts worldwide and the author of the five-star rated book, How to Survive 911 Medical Emergencies, step-by-step -step before, during, and after. Please welcome Nancy May. Welcome everybody to Money 911, where we talk about health, wealth, and peace of mind, and how it all works together, right, for good. And I'm really excited today, near and dear to my heart. I always ask my guests, and you heard the fabulous intro for Nancy before, and I always ask them to give me a title that just like this is a mastermind you know what what are we going to talk about so she came up with a really great title which is just to the point basically right how not to go broke or become broke <laughs> by caring for mom and dad so this is this is near and dear to my heart and just a little short piece about I went through this with my family my mom and dad uh, for you know 15 20 years and I wish there was a Nancy because when you're alone and you don't know how to manage this, there's no no class in school. This and I literally prayed. I go, there needs to be training on this. So Nancy, you are an answer to a prayer. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure to be here with you. And you've really put together some really great things and and right to the point, the financial challenges that everybody goes through because. I remember, you know, my mommy had cancer and she came up to me and she had this piece of paper and she said, honey, I want you to share this with your clients. And I looked at her, she was like crying. I go, what's wrong, mom? And I looked at it, it was like chemo, five days, $90,000, okay? Ouch. Right? right? She had chemo five days every month for a year. A million dollars is not a lot of money when you think you're gonna self-insure doesn't work like that yeah, yeah right and then after like 10 years of that then daddy gets sick and you know the kids you don't want your kids to have to go through the drawers which i never did if your parents financial and look at like oh boy looking for those nickels and dimes and yeah, thinking i need i need gonna, dollars <laughs> not cents right yeah, <laughs> i'm gonna have to work i'm gonna have to get three jobs here right so uh, you know obviously the challenges are, are right there. And, and you know, you've had your own living experience that's inspired you to do this great work, yeah, right? No, it did. It absolutely did. And you, and you have a podcast all about it, right? I have a podcast called Elder Care Success, which covers all sorts of issues. I say we're dealing with the emotional, the physical, and the financial aspects so that we don't become broken and don't yes. go broke. Yes. So it's a combination of things because, yes. you know, the, the finances, as you know, can break us in many ways, not just right. financially, but just in, I think the stress and the strains and everything else that goes on with it. It's, it's, it's like, horrific, right? It is. I think I considered it one of the top worst things, you know, death, taxes, you know, long -term oh, and happy care. tax day. We're recording on tax day, right? Yeah, right. Happy tax day. <laughs> and right now you're in the lowest, get ready. Well, don't include inflation, but no, yeah. that's a whole other issue. That's a whole other show. That's another show. <laughs> that's another show. Don't get me started on safe money, but okay. So what are some of the common challenges financially that you ran into in this catastrophic situation? Oh, where do you want to start? I know. Say, you know, the, the first one, well, let me back up. You know, fortunately, my folks were always very good about sharing where everything was. Yeah. So here's where the bank is. Here's our account. They got me on the account. I controlled everything. When that time came, I didn't touch anything until I was officially the POA and, and had financial control. Right. But I also knew that they they had a financial advisor mm -hmm. who I did not trust. Right. 
And there are, there are many great financial advisors out there, but the key, the key is to make sure you've got somebody who understands that it's benefit to client, not benefit to broker exactly. and the corporate shareholders. <laughs> That's right? right. And partially, you know, a lot of them actually, I wouldn't say a lot of them, but there are a good number of, of programs that are out there that actually create the incentive to sell stuff that we don't necessarily need. So know what you need first. That's important. But the first thing was to get rid of that financial advisor, move over to somebody who could help us. And it took me three years to unravel all the nitpicky little stuff that this did, this guy did. Exactly. And he was exactly. making money. My parents were losing money on the account, all because my my dad trusted him. My mom didn't, thankfully, and she pulled some of hers, but it wasn't enough to really do that. So I was on the phone at times three times a day with my financial advisor saying, okay, Steve, like, what do we got next? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But, but you know, like I said, thankfully, there are many great financial advisors out there, you know, like yourself who do this kind of work, who really understand what goes on. Oh, um, you know, that's what started my business was seeing the quote, and I'm not a financial planner, I'm a legacy wealth strategist completely out of the stock market, only in safe money. But what got me was seeing clients coming in at 60, 70, and 80 with these guys that were putting them at risk at 70 oh, yeah. and 80 years, 90 years old with the only money they had. And they really didn't care. And these people come in, you know, eating peanut butter and crackers after the crash lost 40, 60% of their money. And they got, you know, nobody's telling them anything. Because you go to no. school and you learn how to make money, you get out of school, and then you, you're you just making money and you give it to somebody else to gamble. I hate that. System. No, don't don't give your right? chips to somebody else to gamble. If you're going to do that, at least have a regular conversation. I, you know, I will share that I was working, I felt very guilty way back when yeah. at some point and said, I'm going to give my relationship, my my financial advisory, my brokerage relationship, although they call it, see if no, they're not called brokers anymore, right? But anyway, yeah, we'll call right. it a broker for this point, right. uh, to a woman who was a financial advisor. I said, I've got to do this with another woman. And I gave her a little bit, not a lot, because I didn't want to put all my eggs in one basket. And I called her one day and she says, why do you keep calling me? You don't have enough money with me for me to even be bothered talking to you. And I'm Jeez. like, okay, <laughs> let us get the heck out of here. So out everything here. pulled out, <laughs> went to the guy who I work with now. Uh, and when we had problems pulling the money out of that account. She said, why are you calling me? You're not my client anymore, but you just go away. Excuse me. Yeah. Like, what's wrong with this, right? Oh, so nasty. <laughs> it is so nasty that, you know, this, that what you're talking about is why my f clients become my family and friends because this is yeah. me, me yeah. at a different age. If we can't treat each other like that, respect and understanding exactly. and, and realizing that we all have to live on this planet together Please. in a way that yes that we respect one another right that's all that's not yeah. is it that much right to love each be other be good and be kind and do yes. well for the right reason right that's it boom yeah Perfect. so that was that was sort of the first thing financially right and then it was firing the attorney and the accountant who were also in cahoots with this oh, guy so because they do kind of work together right they sure do yep yep and uh and then then you know mom and dad wanted to move to a care facility to not be a burden to my sister and myself, which I wow. greatly appreciate. I understand most yeah. parents don't want to be a quote unquote burden yes. to our kids. Yes. But I never considered them a burden. And then wow. it, it happened sort of very quickly. They knew where they wanted to go. I knew it was going to happen. And then all of a sudden things started to unravel about eight months afterwards. And we went from $1,500, which was the buy-on rate, because right. my goodness, you're True. not going to have another bed there which is total BS, you know, because there's plenty of room at the end for you guys. Just let me know. Tell your parents there's plenty of room at the end. Don't worry about it. You're not on a donkey. You're not like this. Right. <laughs> really? You, you don't need to worry about like not having a place to stay. Yes. There's a lot. Right. There, these things, these care facilities are popping up like mushrooms on a wet day, I say. So don't worry about it. 
<laughs> right. That's another sales gimmick. Right? It's another it's another another sales. And they are yeah. not medical facilities, just so that you know. They are not legally yeah. medical facilities and they are not inspected by CMS or Center for Medicare and Medicaid. But that's a whole nother story. So we got there and um, they were okay for a while. And then mom started to get depressed. She had uh, early onset dementia. We didn't know what it was, but we kind of figured something was going on. Yeah. And then she started to fall, mm. um, cracked ribs, eight stitches in her head, oh. depression, 60 pounds later, down oh. because she wasn't eating. And right. the little care ladies would tell me, or the cleaning ladies would say, Miss Nancy, we know that you don't live here, but we got to tell you what's going on because mm. we know that you care, even though you don't live here. Right. So right. they explained what was going on. And I was told that they were, they, they had been, it explained to them that if my mom didn't want to go down to the dining hall to eat or the dining room, then nobody was to bring her food. Whoa, that's nuts. Crazy. Right. N needless to say, Yikes. I was spending an extra $6 for every meal that she wasn't eating being brought down anyway. Oh my goodness. And depending upon it's six to $12, if, no matter what it was, you know, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, depending Ooh. on what it was. And, and that was it. And oh, my poor dad was, you know, was kind of oblivious because he didn't want to see the pain. That's dad. Yeah. You know, he's like blocks it out by just being there for her. Right. And he'd make sure that she had she had little extra creamers in the in the room. <laughs> so you bring the creamers in a Danish. And that was it. Like, okay, right. mom. Dad, like dad, mom cannot live on creamers and Danish alone. <laughs> right. Right. But that fifteen hundred dollars went to thirty five hundred dollars a month, which was mm -hmm. the normal fee. And then it went to you know, and sixteen, you know, sixteen thousand dollars, and then thirty thousand dollars a month very quickly. Yeah, you know, this is the thing. I'm so glad you're talking about. It. I'm so glad we're going to help promote your podcast too. Get this everywhere. Everybody listening, make sure you subscribe. Tell your friends because this is one of the things that I see. I've counseled over six thousand people in thirty-two years, and the one, you know, there's three things that people don't have catastrophic illness, long-term care protection, right? Yeah. Only mm -hmm. like 2% of everybody in the country has. And understand that. your policy because your policy may not cover everything either. They're all That's different. key. Yeah. There's a, every policy Jeez. is different that's being sold. So really understand what you're getting and why and how you can use it. Right. Because there are, I call them kickers, you know, when it kicks in and when yeah. you can actually use it. Yeah. And, and the different ages that people are told about it like when you get it in your you some people get it in their company right and it's a, a, a different price than when they get it when they get out of their company the point is just to learn about it yeah. and take time out right listen yeah. to these shows and learn about it because that's one of the three things that you're going to need what is it nancy seven out of ten of us before the pandemic end up in a nursing home right Right. Yeah. Now it's probably yeah. a lot higher than that, I would think. After well, you know, nursing homes are typically geared towards more of, I call it the end of life or, or critical care versus right. a care facility. They're two different things. Right. A nursing home, a rehab, a medical facility is that it's a medical facility and it is under the guise of state and federal guidelines. Right. A care facility, independent, assisted, uh, and memory care is not a medical facility nope. and may not be covered by your long-term care insurance. Boom. Exactly. There's so understand. Yeah. Actually, I was in a, in a program um, where we first met and one of the other individuals that was in the group was a medical, do medical doctor. And she says, I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And so and we kind of had different journeys because your parents opted into the to the care facility and your mom was sounding like she was needing that but they didn't, dad didn't know what to do you know i, I got know. to visit them in their house and dad said see what i got like there's a dried up old chicken in the refrigerator i was like dad <laughs> do you know how to go to the grocery store you know there's ice cream there's cheerios and there's hot dogs you know how to do that <laughs> <laughs> right. and he really. learned the big chicken was the big it was like putting putting the you know the the icing on the cake, I guess, in chicken <laughs> style. <laughs> Not, but, you know, and my parents were, were like, we were the ones where they didn't want the kids, just like here, they didn't want the kids to take care of them, but they weren't going to a nursing home. They're going to stay in their own home, right? That's 80% of the population. And, you know, that's okay, too, if you know how to do it. It's complicated and expensive, right? 
Well, we actually, well, it was less expensive than the care facility. We took mom and dad out. We moved to another care facility. We, we, I moved my folks four times before we got to where they ended up when, where they passed into their own home. But we moved from the care. They went from their home, which they sold to a care facility. We took them out of there because they would have died. I mean, I have boy, before and after pictures. You wouldn't believe I've shown them to people and they say, oh. six months later, they look like totally different people, which was no true. Food. <laughs> like, like they're lit, Right, right. We went to a, another independent care. I fired the agency. I fired everybody. We hired my own aides and ran it like I call it mom and dad. Inc. It was a small business, business number yeah. two, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so right, I become French right. overnight. Yeah. And and we did that. And then that didn't work after a while because uh, two things I was worried about. There's only one elevator down. So I was worried about fire in case an issue happened, right? No way out. And dad started to go downhill weight wise because he couldn't eat the food with, with his teeth. He had teeth yeah. problems, dental problems. So, you know, um, a 200 pound, 89 year old guy cannot live on a slice of pizza for lunch alone. <laughs> right. Yeah. A small, tiny, petite woman can, but like mm-hmm. dad wasn't right. fat, but he was like, you know, he's a football yeah. player in his college years. So, right. but not in his 89 years. Yeah. So, you know, we, we went there and then we moved out of that one. And then um, it was a, a fellow when I was looking for another place who said, I love what you're doing. Like, why do you want to go to another care facility? Why don't you just rent a house on Zillow? And I thought, brilliant. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. You know, I, I'm sort of like the mouth that roared. I talk to everybody to uh-huh. work out the problems and see, because I'm not the one that always has the the, the questions or the answers. Right. To these. So I just talk to everybody and, you know, whether yeah. at Panera or at McDonald's or Walmart, you name it. I talk to everybody here what their story was. And then um, I use the world sort of as my independent board of directors for mom and dad, Inc. If I know that's what's going on. Right. And that's how things sort of happen. So we ended up renting a house on Zillow, making sure it was safe and then buying a home, figuring that we'll own an asset. It's an investment right. in an asset, retrofit right. the bathroom. But in the course of that time, from the care facility to buying a house and an asset, we saved $200,000 a year. Exactly. Exactly. Well, you know, it didn't cost me $30,000 a month to have mm-hmm. mom and dad at home and have right. better food and better yep. quality of life. And mom was a painter and, you know, yeah. painted away and dad, you know, watched me in the garden when I came to visit and they yeah. went for walks around the blocks with the aides. And it was, and they did, I've got pictures of them in Halloween costumes at Halloween time with the kids that came around. Yeah. So it was a different style of life and they loved it. It was good. It's the best way to go if you can, you know, pull it off. Like just in 2010, having, you know, of course, being in a, in a care facility is going to be cheaper at home. And this is, of course, a high zip code, Northern California, was $15,000 a month for home care. So that, you know, That's seemed a to be yeah. a lot for in 2010, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, well, if and, and there's different ways of handling it. I mean, obviously, what we did is we hired our own independent aid. So I did the background checks, I did the reviews, I handled right. everything properly. And but it was, I mean, it's managing a staff. It's a full time job, right? And I, well, it wasn't for me because I, I guess it was, but it really was. I mean, I wasn't there hands on. I was 1,200 miles away, and I had a lead aid. Uh-huh. And so, but it was regular, you know, daily calls or sometimes when things were going great, it was just three times a week, but it was a check-in. It was a, you know, boss manager and six other aides. Right. So it was a full, t- it was a full team. That's amazing. Boy, that's great. And, you know, caregivers, you know, they say the people that care for other people usually pass away before the people i mean it's very it's stressful yeah stressful and special people that are caregivers you know god bless all the caregivers because they're you know they're giving their life for the other person and taking care of them and doing all of those things what resources did you find if any for that i found tons of resources well finding the aids was uh was an experience and um I, I will cheat and I will let you know <laughs> that I I hired um, my first one away from the agency. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to hire more, right? but you know, they sure. were, they were afraid because they said they were going to be sued. And I was like, you can't get, you know, you can't sue these people. There's nothing to sue for. Exactly. Like, come on, really? I know. So, um, you know, if there's a lawyer out there, you know, so shoot me right next, come I'm done. On. Right. 
um, you know, uh, uh, call me bad. <laughs> right. But right. the quality of life that I gave those aides mm -hmm. was also a lot better than the agencies that they were working for because the stories were pretty horrific. One was the lead aide that I had at the time. I had to get rid of one lead aide and bring another one in because you always have to monitor. You know, sometimes that's they burn right. out and things don't work or things change in their life. And, you know, that's right. okay. But I say, as soon as you hire one, you're always hiring the next one. Don't give up. Don't stop. And don't rely on one. I had a yeah. team six to eight at times. And, you know, they did not work all at the same time. But there was a schedule so they could have lives yeah. too. Yeah. But, um, but uh, you know, it's it just takes time. You know, one one aide was saying, here's what I got from the agency at Christmas time. They said, please come in and get your Christmas gift. And she said, can you just mail me? And she says, no, 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 you have to come in. You have to come in. So she came in and the gift was a water bottle that had the agency's name on it under the Christmas tree. <laughs> that was her Christmas gift. Oh, dear. Jeez. Oh. I will tell you, these ladies oh. got a hell of a lot more than a water bottle with I their name on it under so. the Christmas what an tree. Insult. What a, it's almost an insult, really, because... Yeah. And it sounds so similar. I mean, I've, we've really never talked before. So hearing your story for the first time and I'm going, wow, that's just what happened to me. I went through the, you know, vetted out and I did the same thing. The agency was so cruel to these people, yeah. you know, and and maybe they're from a different country. And so they didn't really understand and they're, they would charge a certain amount and they really got barely any and so i ended up doing the same thing i said you just come to work for us and they, and they get paid more from you and there's a you know there's a mutual respect that goes in right and you know in the old the old story is or the story is in corporate you hire slow and you fire fast well mm -hmm. in the aid word of taking care of mom and dad i say you trust your gut you hire fast and you fire fast <laughs> right that's <laughs> because it. sometimes things just run amok Right. And or you made the wrong decision. We had one aide that I thought was going to be great. A little concerned about her attitude, but I thought, eh, maybe I'm wrong. So I should trust my gut. She sat there on the couch for four hours and did nothing but sit on her phone and complain. She says, I get paid a lot more for this up north by doing a lot less. And I said, well, then you can go back north because <laughs> goodbye. You're out of here. <laughs> and she said, well, when do I get my money? And I said, as soon as I cut the check, here you go. <laughs> Behind the door. <laughs> <laughs> Adios, ah, amigos. <laughs> right. Yeah. I had one of those too. It sounds very familiar. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's and some little kleptomaniacs too came by and went off with this. Yeah. Yeah. They're that's, things or something. It's going to happen. It's going it to happen. Just hopefully have the valuables you know, either locked up or, or taken out of the home and, right. and just realize that right. hopefully, you know, as, even if it means a lot to your heart, it's just stuff. It's right. ultimately mom and dad that you worry about. That's the whole thing. It's all just stuff, but the family is the. Cool. It still hurts, but yeah, it does. It does yeah. because you trust people, and mm -hmm. so what? What are the big things like people that are listening? Because mm -hmm. everybody's at different places. What? How? What do we do? You know, because it, it all happens different. It isn't one size fits all? And no, it's not one size fits all. You know, typically. There's there's a couple of different ways. On, I just reported a, a podcast short on this. There are a couple of different ways that this happens. There's a major incident. Something right. happens. Somebody falls, breaks a hip, has a head injury. Yeah. They're in the hospital. They got a rehab. Boom. Right. right? Boom. Right. And, and now you're thinking, oh, my God, now what do I do? Exactly. They want to go home. Well, they can't go home. Well, here's the deal. A rehab facility or a, a medical facility after the hospital will say that they can't release them because there's no support at home. That is total BS. You can leave. You can go anytime you want. You can say, I don't care what you say. It's my responsibility. I will take it from here. Right. You have a yeah. right to refuse. You have right. a right to walk out the hospital with mom and dad, if yeah. even if they say no. So understand you have control. That's key. Good one. Yeah. The thing is then is to understand what you're going to need if mom and dad are coming home. And I have a whole checklist if you need that on here are, the, here are the things that you're going to need as time goes on. So everything from making sure that there's a, a, a proper walker if you need that, a wheelchair if you need that, a hospital bed. Medicare will typically give you a hospital, especially if there's a VA. If your parent is a vet, you can get a lot of this stuff for free. You're going to have to fight for it because they'll tell yeah. you it's take forever. And yes. you just say, no, I don't have time. Who is your boss? I'd like to have a conversation. And if you can't help me, I will just go to my state representative and we'll take care of it that way. 
Boom. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Thankfully, my dad said, worst case scenario, you always talk to the boss first. <laughs> He right. told me early on, he said, don't wait, talk to the CEO. He would write don't. letters to CEOs of Fortune 500 all the time, especially if they were Dartmouth alumni, because he was. <laughs> right. like, what a cool. character. Yeah. I learned from the best. That's right. <laughs> Sounds like it. Do you, do, you, do you actually coach people or have a system of things that you can share with other people going through this? Well, what I what I do right now is I can help people with that. But especially if they're going from a facility to home, that's a that's a big one. The other big thing that I coach people on is if you are thinking about putting mom and dad in a care facility, call me. I go through a course and a program on just how do you understand the contract, know exactly what your obligations are, what mom and dad's obligations are, what to sign, what not to sign, and how to sign it. And just as important, how how do you ask questions so that you know that there are no going to be there are not going to be any surprises because there will always be surprises. In fact, I was doing some research to see I've got a whole list of contracts and other things that are going on and that are out there. I'm not an attorney, but I know how to read contracts. And even an attorney will say, you know, legally this is what you sign, what you don't sign. They won't tell you what the ramifications are ultimately financially when it comes right. down to it. Right. Right. They, they just don't know. They don't know. So yeah. I look at the whole big picture. And if you know how to ask the right questions, and Trent's not going to tell you how to ask the right questions because they don't know themselves. Exactly. It's well, it's a different it's a different story. Yeah. But you have to look at how this works and how's it going to work for your parents and how's it going to work for you. And most of these places are private care or private pay, which means that if you or mom and dad run out of money, they have the right to say, bye bye. Right. Yeah, there's such a there's such a fear around the medical thing and people can't leave the hospital or take on their own, you know, they get restricted from that. But no. you you have such a valuable that, you know, just knowing what you're signing and getting into that is like the price of admission right there. Do not be afraid to take control and let people know that you're in control. In fact, I just did um, another podcast the other week that was released that was a conversation that I had with GoDaddy, the domain people. I was on a customer okay. service call and he said, what does Nancy May do? Uh -huh. And I told him and he says, oh my God, I'm going through this now. Where can I sign up? How do I? And he <laughs> was dealing with something called senior dumping. So his dad had gone to the hospital for, he fell or, or something happened. When they wanted to send him back home to the care facility, the care facility said, we can't take you back here. Hmm. We can't wow. take care of you. So he had no place to go. Wow. Is that, is that some new, the new something or other? It's been going on for a long time. Wow. Long time. Or the worst case scenario, and there's been some cases in California where you are, is they'll say, well, especially if there's no family member, it doesn't happen that often, but it does happen, is they run out of money. So they say, okay, we'll take them back, but we'll have to move them to another facility. So what they do is, this has happened a couple of times, is that they'll put them into like one of those no-tell motels mm. till they say they can, they can bring them back and they never bring them back. And then so they're left at the no-tell oh. motel. Oh, that's so cruel. They're so yeah, cruel. Yeah. No, I won't even begin to. No, no I, I won't. I won't. I won't, I won't go there. Yeah, but yeah, the point yeah. is to inspire people ahead of time. It doesn't it's happen a lot, but it does happen. It so does just be happen. aware of it. California yeah. is the worst, but I'll just say that. <laughs> There's a lot of just the way that they have set it up. It isn't to empower people, but you are. And, and what you're sharing. You have to empower yourself mm -hmm. and not be afraid to say no. You know, That's the, it. the old right. movie network where the guy screams out the window, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. Well, that's kind of me. You know? <laughs> maybe, that's what, maybe that's what's going on on the planet right now. Sort of the temperatures going up and then, well, and everybody, that movie, everybody stuck their head out. It was New York or something. They stuck right, yeah. their head I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. anymore. <laughs> you know, I think, I think we should do this. We should do this in mad as hell caregiver day. And yeah. just, we should all scream out our windows one day. Right. <laughs> and the sound will resonate around the world and set everybody free. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good anyway. Let's hope so, right? <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, this is a great conversation. I we could go on and on with it, but I want to just give some takeaways to people. Like, what what kind of things do you like? Someone's listening to this. You know, they're driving down the road or something. Like, 
give them some like quick tips of something that they can do and how to connect with you? Well, you can connect with me. Just send me a note at uh, caremanity, C-A-R-E-M-A-N-I-T-Y at gmail.com. Quick way to get me or on Instagram, it's caremanity10. So just drop me a note there or Facebook. I'm, I'm around there on Facebook too. So in, in LinkedIn, I'm on LinkedIn as well. But um, you can still drop me a note any place there. And um, tip is, you know, start the conversation with mom or dad early, even if they don't want to do it. That's it. Yeah. You know, the hard part is there are a lot of people, a lot of parents who don't even want to talk about mm-hmm. the final years. So one piece of advice I gave to a friend who had the same problem, she says, what do I do? You know, I said, here's what you do, Monica. You sit down with mom and you say, you know, I'm going through this myself. I'm trying to set up some some plans so that my son knows what should happen, what would happen if something happened to me and what my wishes are. So these are the things I want. What are the things do you want, mom? You know, let, so if you share what you're doing, yeah. It sort of opens the door. Now, mom or dad may not want to talk about it, right. but it's going to start the process of them thinking, well, if she's doing that, maybe it's okay for us to talk about it. That's right. That's it. Having the conversation. And it's kind of a breakthrough because, you know, they've always been mom and dad. And then, you know, and it, this is an example with my folks. And I sold long-term care insurance. I never sold anything, really pushed it against it, but on them or for them or whatever. But right. I said, Dad, you guys, you know, mom had cancer and then it was cancer free for a few years. I said, maybe you might want to get some long term care so you can stay at home. My dad was like, I'm never going to a nursing home. Like, I'm just going to walk. Yeah, well, you can do it at home. You can use it at home. It's okay. Right. right. No, he was going to walk out into the desert. Right. <laughs> Sure, oh yeah, dad, right. You're yeah. gonna walk out in the desert and mom's kiss that in your iguana goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> exactly. And mom was like, "Yeah, honey, let's do it." So they didn't, and they they went through millions of dollars. They yeah. didn't have it all set up, so it was kind of the nightmare of my business. But the point is, have the conversation, and it can be a friendly conversation because it's out, it's out of love, right? And it can be really fun. I mean, go yeah. on like a wild vacation. If your wildest dreams would happen, would, like, do you want to burial at sea, like on Disney Sea Explorer? I don't know. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Do you it. want to go on an airplane? And- <laughs> right. You know, do you, I like, do you want to be dust in the wind? Like, you dust know, I don't know, wind. desperado, whatever right. it might be. But have some fun with it. You know, it all doesn't yeah. have to be so serious because- yes. You yes. know, life, life is, it can be light and so can those final days. That's right. And that's important, but be empathetic to their, their fears. Yes. Yeah. You could go before them. Who knows? That's, right. In the world we're in right now, it's anything can happen. Right. So yeah. keeping it up and keeping it positive and with uh, eternity in mind, it, it's not so scary and, you know, because the the illusion of death and the separation, I mean, you know, I mean. It's scary. Yeah, it's hard. Know, it yeah, is. Yeah. And, you know, they're not we there anymore. Know. Right? But and it happened. Right. <laughs> right. They're, they're there once right. and then they're gone. They're dead. That's it. It's, it's, um, it's rather final. <laughs> well, and I, you know, I, in my, in my being, I just, I never let them go. They're, they're always with me and I yeah. see them everywhere and, you know, um my grandmother's pearls and different things that remind me. So, you know, of course, in the spirit, we're all together. But on this journey, we can make it happy and fun and have the conversation. Absolutely. Nancy, it's it's really a pleasure to talk to you. I'm really, really grateful that you do what you do. Tell everybody again. Uh, the podcast. Trying- yep. The podcast is Elder Care Success. It's, okay. You can go to eldercaresuccess.live or just find Elder Care Success, type it into Google and you'll, it'll pop up like the first 10 of them are there and Beautiful. whatever your, your listener is. And then find me on Facebook. It's uh, Nancy A. May. You find me there on uh, LinkedIn, Nancy May. It's that one's under board bench. You'll see me from my corporate background because I've taken all the business experience and put this into this. You can and tell. then on Instagram, it's caremanity10. Because we yes. want to be a perfect 10 caregiver, right? <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I can okay. see I can see that in you. I can see your your wisdom of the corporation infused in this. And yeah. thank you. Really, thank you for yeah. doing what you're doing. It's a great gift. And everybody listening, 
check it out and learn about it, talk about it with your family and connect with Nancy, Nancy yeah. May. And you too. Thank you. Thank you, All Chris. Right. I really appreciate it. And I'm just one more plug on the long-term care. Yes. Please understand your policies, have a deep dive discussion with, with Chris or whoever you're working with. Yes. So you understand exactly what your policy oh. offers and allows. That is so critical. It's so critical. And now I got to put a PS on that because it's not, you know, people, and it isn't just the long-term year. People don't know where their money is. Like, where's your, right. where's your 401k? Oh, it's at so-and-so company, but where? Well, it's an IRA. So it's not bad on the people. Nobody's been taught. So it's such a blessing to see you out there sharing what people need to know. You know, I tell, tell people, take a retirement planning holiday. I mean, whether you're retired or not. <laughs> Meaning, look at what you've got, know how it works, and when you're going to go on a vacation, you just have everything all planned out, right? And and then the stress is gone. And you, and can, you don't need to do it all at once, you know, just you do go. it in bite-sized pieces. You know what they say, you can like, you eat an elephant one bite at a time or something like that? I don't <laughs> yeah, know. Right. I prefer not to eat an elephant, but that's no, thank you. <laughs> That's enough. But we get it. Nancy May, thank you so much for being here. Thank Appreciate you, Chris. You. It's been a All pleasure. Right. Thanks. There's so much to learn about healthy money. I hope today's discussion brings you one step closer to securing and protecting your future. So you can get started on the right foot, go to meetwithchrismeller.com and schedule your free financial fitness strategy session. Thank you for listening. And please subscribe to Money 911 so you don't miss our next episode, which includes health, wealth, and peace of mind.